markets to people, that is what really shapes the outcome and what a prevalition always created through this process. Yeah, I mean, so I'm a microbiologist and I've made my career around understanding microbes. Um, like, I, I, I think it's kind of my place of fascination. As you heard in the movie, you know, I picked up this book as a teenager, the classic book of deadly diseases, and I was just kind of blown away at how, you know, these little critters, like how do they do that? So I came at it from, I want to understand the microbes. Um, and then actually, uh, a few years ago, I got funding from a wonderful charity called Cure Kids, um, and they introduced me to um, a, a little girl, actually a little girl anymore, who's a teenager now, um, Eva, who uh, suffers from, you know, she gets recurrent infections from Staphylococcus, which is one of the organisms that I study. And so I got to meet her and her family. I remember her mom saying to me one day, you know, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I can tell when Eva's going to get an infection because it's like, she's Smells different. And I was like, no, 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 that's like, oh, you can smell bugs, absolutely. Staph aureus stinks, it's got very distinctive smell. But what that, what Kill Kids did to me was really make me see the people, like, so I was fascinated by Staph aureus, and I want to understand it was disease, you know, to try and stop it. But I forget <laughs> that there are people involved, and so, you know, meeting Eva and, and Jeff. It was really important because it really made me remember, oh, or reminded me that there are people involved. And so I think that the pandemic has just done it on this really large scale because what we have experienced around the world are really, really different outcomes. And I think that Bloomberg is really illustrates that, right? You can just look at this picture of excess deaths and see that it's one organism. And then what happens around the world depends on socioeconomic conditions, on geopolitical conditions, uh, you know, on trust in the media, on trust in government. And so that just reminded me of how small, <laughs> really how small uh, and significant the virus part was. Um, and I think it also is a really good reminder that, you know, we've, for many, many countries for many years, we've had this like real cheerleading of science, and I've certainly been used as a cheerleader for science and we all be able to do science. And actually, you know, what we know from the pandemic was that, yes, we need scientists, we need people who understand the virus and can, the immunologists who understand the immune systems that can come up with vaccines, but your vaccines are utterly useless if people don't take them. And so what does that mean? That means the humanities, that means history, that means social sciences. So, you know, it's in summary, everybody is important. It's exactly what we saw during lockdowns. Who were important our essential workers, right? You know, so I think it, it should be a reminder that nothing belongs on a pedestal, that we all play an integral role in whatever we do. And I think I was just kind of reminded of that yet again, that just everybody has a part to play. And I think with the future we face, we must not forget that everybody can do something.